Hello dear friends, this is Yule Humphreys. I'm glad to be with you to share with you another word from the Bible. Praise God. May the Lord bless you and keep you in His will. And may He show you something that you need to see, teach you something that you need to know. I'm going to speak on the fact that, uh, that uh, the Lord has open arms before you. He has open arms before you. And we need to open our arms to others. The Bible teaches us over in the book of James the danger of being partial toward people. Partiality. We, in other words, uh, we spend time with one group more than the others. We accept one group more than the others. In the book of James, in the second chapter, it says, "You, if, if a person comes into your church, he's talking about church, when you're in church, and he says uh, he has real expensive clothing and he's dressed nice, you give him a, a real special place. But if a person comes in in dirty clothes and ragged, and, and you look at him and you set him aside and say, you have to sit over here uh, where, where you know others are not assembled. And so therefore, you are judging that person. And the Bible says that you're not to judge. And so, we need to recognize, I'm talking to you, some of you now that are uh, church attendees, you go to church, and you uh, spend some time every Lord's Day in the church of the Lord Jesus. And that's good. Now when you do that, you need to learn to open your arms to everybody. And not be partial to just one group. It's a good thing, I think, to uh, sit at different places instead of just sitting at the same place by the same person every Sunday. Sit with someone else and open a conversation and sit down and say, I'm glad that you're here. And, and if you don't know them, tell them your name and you'd like to meet them. And just spend a few minutes with them before the service begins. But be open to everybody. Not just those that are partial to you and you're partial to them. But to everybody. Lest we be judging. And we need not to fall into that sin of judging others. We need not do that because the Bible tells us that, uh, that, it, is, uh, that it is a bad thing to sin against others. Over in the book of, of Romans, the 14th chapter... It says, who are you that judges another? You see, you're judging people when you, when you uh, look down on somebody because they're not well uh, and make well a good appearance. And it looks like that they're insignificant and even uh, uh, unclean. And uh, maybe from off the street and you just don't have much to say to them. But you see, you're judging that person. And the Bible says, we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Therefore, do not judge anyone. Judge yourself, lest you be a stumbling block for others. And so it's important that we learn not to judge, but to, oh God, accept people with open arms and pray that God will help us to accept people of all, <coughs> of all colors. Though we're in the book of Colossians, it teaches us that, that we are to accept all others, uh, Jew or Greek, or uh, circumcision or uncircumcision, or Scythian, bond or free, because Christ is all and in all. You see, we're in Christ. And Christ accepts everybody. Christ loves everybody. He loves people of all nationalities. Little children. Oh, he loves them. Red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. And we ought to love people and care for people even though they're not one of our own cliques, so to speak. We need to recognize that we're not to judge people, but we're to love them. Over oh, in the book of, uh, of uh, John, in the 15th chapter of John, uh, Jesus says some, some words that are very, very important. Uh, and, then, and this is, he said, Now, uh, these things I've spoken to you, that my joy might be with you, and that your joy may be full. You see, Jesus wants you to be joyful, dear Christian. He wants you to have joy, the joy of the Lord. Even though you're facing problems, you may face problems, but face them with faith in God and know that all is well. Trust the Lord and know that He's there to help you. We have, I've often said that a Christian life is like a rose bush. It has beautiful roses, the aroma of the flower, and the beauty of the rose. But on that same stem, there are sharp thorns. And so the Christian life has made up of roses, beautiful, and thorns that hurt and sting. 
and so that's part of life as a Christian. I uh, I went the other day. The Lord has healed me of incurable diseases. Hallelujah! I went there the other day because I have a little place here on my on my nose, a little uh, a skin uh, skin of cancer of probability, and they were looked at it and they took a piece of it and sent it off and. And I, I just heard yesterday that it is malignant, and then uh, they're going to have to go in there and cut it out, take out the roots of it. It's on my nose up here. Now, I had prayed that I'd be healed and it'd be benign, but there's the thorn. I have so many roses, but there's the thorn. So I know God's going to take care of it. I know and believe it is. I believe it'll be all right, but I know that God is going to be my strength in it. And I think this is His will, and there's a purpose in it. I thank God for it. So I'm trying to thank God for the thorns as well as the flower. Paul said over in 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, that, uh, that the Lord allowed the devil to, to put a thorn in his flesh, and that he couldn't get rid of it. But he said, the Lord said, My grace is sufficient for you. And so Paul said, I'll glory in my thorns, because then... The power of God rests upon me. Amen. And so it's in God's love that we learn. He went on to say, This is my new commandment that you love one another even as I've loved you. How has the Lord loved you? He loved you just as you are. He loves you now just as you are. If you're poor and you don't have a dollar, the Lord loves you. If you're a rich man and you love Jesus, the Lord loves you. If you have much and you love to Jesus because he makes it you have more in him than you have in all your riches then he loves you and you're safe if you have nothing in this world you don't know where your next meal is coming from but you've got Jesus then you have enough and God is going to take care of you because he loves you he loves you as much as he loves the other the Bible teaches us again over in the book of James has not God chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith you see, dear friend, you can be rich in faith. You can be a rich person by just believing the Bible, believing the Scriptures, believing God, believing the Lord. Believe. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Saved from a devil's hell. Saved to have a home in heaven. Saved to walk in light and love with Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Love is the greatest thing. Jesus said, this is my new commandment, that you love one another as I've loved you. As I've loved you. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, praise God. <clears throat> love lifted me. Love lifted me. Oh, our souls in danger look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love. Out of the angry waves, so dark may be the ways and dark, but thou art safe, you see, for in it all you can sing, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. I was talking to a lady the other day, and they've been married, she's been married to her husband for many years, and we were talking about the days when they were going together before she ever married, and, and uh, I said, well, uh, well, I guess there was a reason that you wanted to marry so-and-so. She said, yes, and this is the main reason. She said, before I really loved him as much as I do now, she said, he loved me so much that I just couldn't help but love him. He loved me so much I couldn't help but love him. And that's the way it is with the Lord. He loves you so much, dear friend, you just can't help but love him. Keep on loving him because he keeps on loving you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and that's the truth. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea 
heard my despairing cry, and from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Praise the Lord. God bless you. If you need to pray a prayer and ask the Lord to come in your heart, then do it now and just say, Dear God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe He died for me and paid for all my sins. I believe, I believe He's coming back. I believe He rose again. Come in my heart, Lord Jesus. Help me live for you. Amen and amen. Find you a good church and worship the Lord with His people. And God bless you and help you to know the Lord stands there with open arms and He wants you to stand with open arms to others. Amen. God bless.